Boys and girls, there is a new sheriff in town and his name is Western Legends. What? You know, Legends. I think you'll find it's called Western Legends. Yeah, I know, but I thought it was like a pun on feet? We love compartmentalizing board games into genres. This is a tile placement game about laying tiles. This is an engine building, programming, deck building, character advancement, asymmetric war game. Because believe it or not, this stuff sells like catnip to board gamers. If board gamers were cats. Western Legends has a different ambition. It simply wants to build itself as a game where you'll be exactly what it says on the tin. A cowboy legend. And you know what? It means serious business. In Western Legends, you will take on the role of America's most fabled heroes or villains, and this time they're not even British. In fact, props to Colossal Games for including a diverse roster of playable characters. You could step into the shoes of Bass Reeves, a man who arrested so many criminals that since learning about him, I feel a little trepidatious going to bed each night because I think maybe he's like still alive and then he'll arrest me for board game crimes. And if a life of robbing banks and stealing cattle sounds more appealing, then why not play as the infamous Jesse James, who was, after all, assassinated by the coward Robert Ford, so maybe not. Is Robert Ford in this game? No. Alright, I'm playing as him then. Great, you've chosen your cow bay. What next? Here's the kicker, anything you like. Western Legends gives you one goal of being the most legendary at the end of the game. And by that, it means scoring the most legendary points. But how you get there is up to you. You could be the good boy cowboy and wander the prairie, delivering cattle to railway stations, picking off cutthroat bandits in the mountains and collecting that sweet, sweet bounty. Or you could be Annie Oakley and steal the bounty from that good boy cowboy and then rob a bank while you're at it. And people will be like, Annie, are you Oakley? Are you Oakley Annie? And you know what? You are Oakley Annie because you are a smooth criminal. And that is what that song is about. Or, and get this, you could buy yourself a cowboy hat and spend the entire game in the saloon playing poker in Red Falls and then spend your winnings in the cabaret because spending money in the cabaret is an equally viable source of legendary points. Do you feel like you got your message across there, Elaine? So you're saying what, that this game is... Westworld. Yeah, but that comparison is wholly unfair to Westworld. You don't get to ponder the prospect of your plastic avatars having consciousness, being unwilling participants in plays for grotesque human entertainment, at least within the scope of the game. It's more like you're one of those characters who go to Westworld thinking that you're going to have a rootin', shootin' good time. And you could say I'm going too far with this comparison, but I don't think the allusion to Westworld has been lost on the developers. I mean, look at this railway. It goes nowhere. It's like it exists solely for our amusement. What I'm trying to get at is that it's an illusion that not only has lost all nuance, but it's so unaware of itself that it becomes what it tries to critique. I don't know, Elaine. It doesn't really look like anything to me. Was there, like, a point to that scene, or...? No. No, it was entirely for my own amusement. But I tell you what it did do, Efka. It gave me time to cool down what is undeniably the hottest 52 card deck. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah, it's still hot. Unlike in other games, this isn't just a deck of cards that does something. It does everything. But first, we have to tell you just a little bit more about how this game works. On your turn, you can do three actions. One you will do a lot is Bimble. You can shake your cowboy booty two spaces, or if you acquire a bimbling assistant, such as a mule or a mustang, you could saddle up and reach the dizzying heights of moving up to five spaces. Once you have bimbled to where you want to be, you can do a location action. These are dependent on where you are. If you're at a cattle ranch, you can pick up a cattle token delivered to the train station for a marshal point and whatever is on the back of the token, I'm hoping you can read that, for a fine and entirely legal profit. Or deliver it to an opposing ranch for, once again, the reward on the back, but this time a wanted point, putting you in the very glamorous position of a cow thief. If you're at a mine, you can mine, roll two comically large dice and 
see how many gold nuggets you get. Later at the bank, bring in your sack of gold. Sack actually not included in the game. And you can turn in each nugget for a legendary point and 20 bucks. Also at the bank, you can rob it, fighting the guard. And this is where our legendary deck of poker cards first rears its beautiful head. In Western Legends, you fight. A lot. You can fight bandits, the bank guard. If you're wanted, you can fight the sheriff. You can duel another player. You can rob them. You can even attempt to arrest them if they're wanted. Each time you fight, each player will simultaneously pitch a card face down, flip it, and you guessed it, the one with the highest card wins the fight. Thematic, yes, it's a high noon shootout with the fastest flips of the West, but by now you've probably noticed a couple of things. Firstly, barely any of the actions use this deck. They're only directly necessary for fighting and for playing poker. And second of all, the simultaneous reveal in Flip is hardly innovative. A lot of games use this. And with the cards ranging from two to aces high, it's a bit random. Well, this is where it gets really interesting. This deck of poker cards is multi-purpose, with each card having an alternative use. A six is terrible to pitch in a fight, but play it as a reaction in a razor-tight shootout, lower your opponent's result by two, and it'll be the difference between breathing air and breathing dust. Nobody wants to get caught with their pants down, so you're likely to save up your aces and your kings for a fight. But here's the trick. Their alternative options are bonkers good. A king provides you with an extra action. Choosing whether to save it for a shootout or just spending it to have enough moves to get away from a robbery is asking you to choose between a cheesecake and a big fat brownie, the conundrum that seems to just have one answer. Why can't I have both? Many of these abilities come across as niche and circumstantial, but the more I played Western Legends, the more I was surprised by it. In my fourth game, I found myself just a few points shy of victory. I knew that a visit to the cabaret would let me spend all of my money for four legendary points, but because everyone's final score is slightly obfuscated, I wasn't certain that that was going to be a win. And it just so happened that I had a spare action and the other leading player was in the same location as I was. So guess what I did? I challenged my opponent to a duel. What better way to win a game about Western legends than a high stakes shootout? And guess what the prize is? Well, if you win, whoever wins gets two legendary points, potentially putting me over the top. But I literally had no idea what my opponent had up their sleeve and I could just snatch defeat out of my victory jaws. So here comes Wallop, a card I have never used and dismissed as too circumstantial. A punch that thematically and actually is brash, standoffish and often pointless, but use Wallop at just the right time and you will glean the mysteries of the universe or in this case, the two cards in their hand, I did win that game. We can wax lyrical about this deck for the rest of this video, more so its tiny counterpart, the NPC deck, which is simultaneously more brutal and more predictable. But it would be a crime not to tell you about the Wanted and the Marshall tracks. Each character might start somewhere on one of these, and whilst it's possible that by the end of the game you will end up on the other side of the law, it's probable that you will try and progress throughout the game through one of these. If you want to be the long arm of the law, each time you beat up a bandit, deliver counter, or maybe even arrest a misbehaving opponent, you'll get a marshal point. Each step up will give you a bounty and reach high enough spots and you will be showered with legendary points. But commit one crime and you will be immediately whisked off the marshal track and put in the naughty corner. Ah, welcome to the naughty corner. It's really good here. We smoke cigars, we rob banks, we have a drinky pool. And life is fine, especially because at the end of every one of our turns, we get legendary points based on how high we are on the wonder track. So just rob banks because it's all fine. Nothing can stop us. Oh crap, who's that? Is that the marshal? Because if that, listen, you just need to, can you hold, hold this for me and I'll, I'll be right back, it's fine. Just, just be there, I'll be back. <laughs> 
Spy! The interplay between the Wanted and the Marshall track is what turns this game from a po face take on mustachioed men and women shooting at each other into a comedy of errors. Yet you might feel great robbing a bank, stealing loads of money, and getting a whopping three points on the Wanted track. But guess what? The only bank on the map is positioned right next to the sheriff's office. Other players, including other Wanted players, can and will move the sheriff, who will most likely arrest you. And Marshall players will probably try and do it themselves. Themselves. Not only netting the martial points, but crucially entirely wiping away all of your progress. So this map becomes a minefield of opportunities and devastation. Even after you've done your time, the temptation to return to crime is great because once again you'll be getting that flow of points. But also the person highest up the wanted track will gain an extra three points at the end of the game. Watching someone play a criminal in this game is hilarious because it's like what watching Wile E. Coyote keep hitting a brick wall over and over again, but they keep coming back for more. Which brings us to the inevitable part of the video. Regular MPI viewers will know that we like to bring games up just to see how they fall. Some glide like a feather, but Western Legends tumbles like a slinky, which is the part where we would have some B-roll of a slinky, but they're 15 pounds. Slinkies are 15 pounds? Anyway, it's ingenious, funny, but sometimes just stops dead in its tracks. Whilst the box suggests that the game is for two to six players, we would never recommend playing this with less than four. The tension of the game comes from getting in each other's way and the dummy player included for lesser player counts appropriately mostly acts like a dummy. Whilst on the other side of the player count spectrum, six is just predictably too tedious to wait for your turn to come back. So what you have is a four at a push five player game. That's fine, but here's the real zinger. In a game about building your own cowboy bad bottom, you would hope that there is an interesting progression to your character. Whilst things you do certainly congeal into a thematic narrative, rules-wise you progress via getting money and buying items. Except money in this game comes far too easily. At the start of the turn, you can make a choice. You can either get two poker cards, 20 bucks, or one of each, except I have almost never chosen money because it will almost certainly somehow magically appear in my wallet anyway. And you are hard capped at 120 bucks to make most of this game's systems unabusable. A cap you will reach multiple times in this game. After at most two visits to the shop, you will find that there's really not much reason to return. Sure, you can buy a rifle to replace your pistol or upgrade it and you'll definitely want to get some sort of a horse-like animal and maybe a minus map or a hat that somehow makes you miraculously better at playing poker. But after that, the only way you'll spend money in this game is to take it to the cabaret. And you will keep taking it to the cabaret because what else do you do with it? And you better hurry up because someone's gonna rob you, but not because they need it, everyone's hard capped and full of it, remember? But because they'll do it just to stop you from spending it at the cabaret. Because somehow that's important? It feels so anti-thematic to have a bunch of buffoons running around with cash falling out of the pockets behaving like chastity belts. I wonder if having a more robust offering in the shop and making cash just a little bit harder to earn would have made a difference. And you know what? Make the items themselves more interesting. I scarcely cared whether I had a pistol or a shotgun. And sure, there is a difference between them, but like most things in this game, it felt very circumstantial and largely irrelevant. And you know what? Kickstarter backers who backed this game will have received an expansion that adds just a few more items, making it so so much more of an interesting proposition and such a typical case of kickstarted board games. We even broached this with the publisher and their response was that they wanted to keep it simple and accessible but it's just an example of this game biting off more than it can chew. It's a big box with beautiful cards, plastic minis and ridiculous dice and it wants to create an adventure. But who is this adventure for? At times it's deterministic and at other times it's wildly unpredictable and it's for all player counts but it only really works at two of those. It's a big game that wants to be accessible to everyone, yet it has these invisible hairline fractures as location borders. And the rules create so many unforeseen interactions that no FAQ covers. We still don't know if you can
can move diagonally. And even after asking on Board Game Geek, we still don't have, at the time of filming, any credible answers. Which brings us to the real problem with Western Legends. If you asked us whether we'd enjoyed it, we'd have to say, you know what, it was great, we laughed, we didn't cry, but we laughed some more and it was fun. But if you asked us whether you should go out and buy it, we would answer immediately, God no. Look, it was fine, it was even very fine, but it pulls in so many different directions that it never feels like it's solidly in any one of them. And that was the same response from all our friends who have diverse tastes when playing it. Everyone enjoyed it, but no one said, hey, when can we play that game again? It's a game that is as great as its company and it will distract you long enough, but you'll eventually realize that you're not having a great time because the game is amazing, but because your friends are amazing. Western Legends facilitates a fun evening, but it's never the star of the show. And with a price tag like that, we would be hard pushed to recommend it. How much does this game cost? Um, Oh, it says here you can get one on pre-order for 55 bucks? Actually... If you enjoy quality, independent board game reviews such as this one from reviewers that are not financially beholden to publishers and are independently crowdfunded, then you might want to share the love and tell others about us and then you'll save money and they'll save money, everyone will save money because we'll tell you which games are actually good or not and then you can spend that money at the cabaret. I'm, I'm not sure I can actually get away with that one. Elaine, do you think I can get away with that one? I think she's gone. Oh well. Subscribe.